This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror film called The Skin I Live In. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In Toledo, Spain, Vera Cruz performs yoga in her room wearing only a body stocking. Downstairs, Marilia loads some food and drinks along with a book into a dumbwaiter and sends it to Vera's room. After taking the items out of the dumbwaiter, Vera calls Marilia on the intercom and tells her that she needs some sackcloth and double-sided tape. When she mentions that she also needs a needle and scissors, Marilia scoffs at her and says she must be joking. In an auditorium somewhere in the city, Robert Ledgard delivers a lecture about rebuilding the facial structure of burn victims. After the lecture, Robert drives to a garage of a maternity hospital to meet briefly with a man who hands him a large case. When he gets home, he takes out a pouch of blood from the case and takes a sample to examine it under a microscope. The next day, Robert starts conducting an experiment to create synthetic skin using fresh animal blood. After putting the sample on a mannequin, Robert applies the synthetic skin to Vera's body. After the procedure, he promises Vera that she will no longer feel any burning sensation. Robert runs a flame over Vera's leg to find out if it would hurt. Vera doesn't feel any pain until he holds the flame on another part of her leg. During his presentation at a conference, Robert discloses that he's working on artificial skin that would be resistant to mosquito bites. He claims that he has tested it in hairless mice and the results were satisfactory. Robert had named the artificial skin Gal after his wife who burned to death in a car crash. After his presentation, the president of the Biotechnology Institute asks him how he made artificial skin tougher. Robert admits that he created it with transgenesis, a process involving the transfer of animal genes to human cells. The president warns him that it's forbidden, but Robert argues that humans already conduct similar experiments on plants and animals. He contends that his research could be used to benefit humanity. The president threatens to expose him to the scientific community, so Robert promises to stop. He tells the president not to worry because his experiment was nothing more than a personal endeavor. When he gets home, Robert goes straight to his room to watch Vera on the monitor. Vera is reading a book, but she suddenly stares at the camera as if she knows that he is watching. When Robert visits Vera in her room, she asks him if there's anything else he'd like to improve. Robert says he doesn't want to improve anything else, so Vera asks him what he'll do with her. Robert stresses that he still doesn't know, so Vera suggests that they should live together like everyone else. Robert gets exasperated with her and tries to leave the room, but she blocks his way and threatens to set fire to the house. Vera begins seducing him and tells him that she knows he's been watching her because he likes her. When Robert returns to his room, he sees Vera on the screen staring seductively at the camera. In the morning, Marilia tells Robert that he shouldn't have made Vera look like his wife. She asserts that Robert will have to kill her or hide her forever. She adds that Vera will end up killing herself eventually if Robert doesn't do it. Robert contends that Vera is strong and a born survivor. Marilia warns him that his feelings for Vera could destroy him if he doesn't get rid of her soon. Robert stresses that Marilia couldn't know what he feels for her because he himself doesn't know. Before leaving, he instructs Marilia to fire all the servants and not to hire anyone else. As the servants leave the property, a man in a tiger costume rings the doorbell and tells Marilia that he's looking for his mother. He notes that he hasn't seen her in a decade. Marilia surmises that his mother must be one of the servants who departed, so she asks him to leave. However, the man insists she wasn't among those who left. He then turns around and pulls down his pants to reveal a birthmark close to his rear. Marilia realizes that the man is her son, Zeka. So she lets him in the property. When Marilia asks Zeka how he found her, he discloses that he saw Robert in Madrid and followed him home. Marilia refuses to let him inside the house, but he barges in anyway. While Zeka is eating, a news program reveals that the authorities are looking for him for his part in a robbery in a jewelry store. Zeka tells his mother that he'll be hiding in the property for a few days, and he'll ask Robert to operate on his face. Marilia stresses that Robert will never operate on him because of what he did, but Zeka says he plans to blackmail him. Zeka notices Vera on a monitor while he is grabbing a drink and tells Marilia that she reminds him of someone. Marilia tells him to leave and threatens to shoot him but Zeka is confident she wouldn't kill her own son. Zeka subdues Marilia, ties her up in a chair, then goes on his way to search for Vera. When Zeka finds the room, he asks her to open the door and speaks to her as if she's supposed to know him. Vera tells him that she doesn't have the key, so he goes back to the kitchen and asks Marilia for it. When he finally opens the door, Vera tries to make a run for it, but Zeka 
grabs her ankle and starts forcing himself on her. Zeka asks how Vera survived the fire, so she tells him that Robert saved her. Vera tells him that she'll go anywhere with him, so Zeka comes up with the idea to kidnap her and force Robert to perform surgery on him. However, he wants to copulate with her before they leave, so they go back to her room. Robert soon returns and shoots Zeka while he's resting on top of Vera. While Robert gets rid of the body, Marilia tells her that Robert and Zeka are brothers, but they never found out. Robert's father had an affair with Marilia, and they kept the child because his wife was sterile. Zeka's father was another servant who left before he was born. Marilia notes that Zeka acted like he knew Vera because he mistook her for Gal. Zeka, who had become a drug dealer, hid in the house about 12 years ago while he was on the run from the authorities. Gal found him and started an affair with him. They ran away together, but their car crashed. Vera survived, but she was horribly burned in the accident. During Gal's recovery, she heard her daughter, Norma, singing in the distance. When she opens the window to watch her daughter, she's distraught to see her reflection on the glass. Gal jumps out of the window because she can't accept her appearance. Norma screams in utter shock upon witnessing her mother's death. Marilia reveals that Norma followed in the footsteps of her mother a few years later. Later that night, in his sleep, Robert dreams about the wedding party of his friend and patient, Casilda of Freys. Six years ago, Casilda points out that Norma seems to be getting along with her nieces and she's no longer afraid to face people. Later on, Robert can't see Norma anywhere inside the house, so he goes outside to look for her. Robert comes across young couples copulating in the garden, but Norma isn't among them. As he continues his search, a young man on a motorcycle drives off the property. Soon, he sees Norma's sweater on the ground. Not far, he finds Norma, unconscious under a tree. When he wakes her, Norma pushes him away and screams hysterically, but he holds her tight and does his best to calm her down. The afternoon before the wedding, Vicente offers one of the dresses at his mother's shop to their assistant, Christina, and says it'll look good on her. Christina tells Vicente that he should wear it himself if he likes it that much. Christina tells Vicente that she doesn't like men, but that doesn't stop him from pestering her. He invites Christina to go with him to Casilda's party, but his mother tells him to leave her alone. At the party, Vicente and Norma smile at each other from a distance. He later introduces himself while the other young couples walk to the garden. While walking in a secluded part of the estate, Vicente asks Norma if she has taken any pills. Vicente asks the question to find out if she's high, but Norma misunderstands and tells him all about the antidepressant she took. Vicente then notes that he is high himself. Norma trips on her high heels, so she throws them away. She takes off her jacket as well and tells Vicente that she's feeling claustrophobic. Vicente says he'll help her get naked and starts kissing her. Norma initially doesn't fight him off, but she starts to get agitated when he pulls down his pants and penetrates her. Vicente covers her mouth when Norma starts screaming, so she bites down on his hand. After pulling his hand off, he knocks her out with a hard slap in his fury. Vicente fixes her clothes and hurriedly leaves the estate on his motorcycle. A week later, Vicente asks Christina if she'd stay to help his mother if he leaves. When she asks where he's going, Vicente says he's getting sick of the town. Vicente then tells his mother that he's going out, but he will be back for dinner. On the road, he notices a van following him. The van soon forces him off the road. When the driver gets out of the van, he shoots Vicente with a tranquilizer and kidnaps him. When he wakes up, he finds himself in a dungeon chained to a wall. Soon, Vicente's mother goes to the police station to ask for any updates on her son's disappearance. The police tell her that his motorcycle has been found, but his body is still missing. The authorities believe that the body washed out to the sea, but the woman insists that Vicente is still alive and tells them to keep looking. When Robert visits Norma at the psychiatric hospital, he finds out that her psychosis has become worse. The doctor advises him not to visit Norma often because she still associates him with the terrible incident at the wedding. Robert soon goes to the dungeon to give Vicente a bath and chain him next to a table to make him more comfortable. When he visits him again to bring food, Vicente begs him not to leave because he's starting to feel lonely. Days later, Norma takes her own life. At the funeral, Robert tells the psychiatrist that he'll report the hospital for homicidal negligence. Robert returns to the dungeon to give Vicente a shave. Vicente surmises that Robert has a daughter because of the toys in the shed. When Vicente mentions it, Robert discloses that his daughter is dead 
and he just buried her that day. After he's done shaving him, Robert knocks Vicente unconscious with an unknown chemical and takes him to the operating room. Fulgencio and other surgeons soon arrive at the house to help him with the operation. Fulgencio notes that the man looks young, but Robert tells them that he's already 27 and he knows what he wants. When Vicente wakes up, Robert reveals that he has performed a vaginoplasty on him. Some days later, Robert visits Vicente and gives him dilators of different sizes to keep the new orifice open. When Vicente asks his motives, Robert discloses that he's Norma's father. Vicente says he can't remember what he did because of the pills he took, so Robert tells him that he'll never forget because he didn't take anything that night. Soon, Robert performs more surgery on Vicente to make him look more like a woman, but his face is still covered with a mask. He gives Vicente a body stocking to protect his skin and help mold his body. Vicente wears the garment and asks Robert to help him zip it up. When Robert gets behind him, Vicente elbows him in the crotch and tries to escape. Robert quickly uses his remote to lock the master door to prevent him from leaving. Vicente grabs a knife and threatens to stab Robert, but he notices that he has a gun. A few weeks later, Robert removes the mask on Vicente's face and tells him that he'll have to start calling him Vera. Robert leaves several dresses for her, but Vera rips them all up in anger. Robert sends her makeup kits and books. Soon, Vera starts practicing yoga using a book as a reference. One day, Robert arrives with Marilia, who had been missing the estate after being gone for four years. As soon as she gets to the kitchen, she tells Robert that everything needs some cleaning, so he instructs her to hire all the help she needs. When she notices the television, Robert tells her that he installed it to monitor a patient. He asks her to look after Vera, but she doesn't need to clean her room because Vera does it independently. Back to the present, Vera brings breakfast to Robert in her room. Robert recalls that he promised Vera the previous night that he wouldn't lock the doors anymore, but he wasn't sure if it was real or a dream. Vera assures him that it was real and tells him that she also promised that she wouldn't leave him. Robert allows Vera to go shopping with Marilia, but Marilia doesn't trust her, so she puts a gun in her purse. Later, Fulgencio stops by to rent Robert's clinic, but he refuses because he has other plans. Fulgencio then shows him a newspaper reporting Vicente's disappearance and expresses his suspicion that Robert kidnapped him for his experiments. Vera soon arrives and tells Fulgencio that she went with Robert willingly. That night, Robert and Vera try to have intercourse, but she says she's still in pain, so she has to get the lubricating cream she bought earlier. She goes downstairs to retrieve her purse, but she also takes Robert's gun. Before going back to her room, she kisses Vicente's photo in the newspaper. When she gets back, she throws the cream at Robert and points a gun at him. Robert reminds Vera of her promise, but she tells him that she lied. Vera fires the gun and hits Robert on the side of the chest. Marilia hears the gunshot and goes to Robert's room armed with a revolver, but she can't find Vera. As Marilia searches for her, Vera slides her hand from under the bed and shoots her. The next day, Vera goes back to her mother's dress shop. When she sees her mother and Christina, she calls their attention while holding back tears from her eyes. Christina notices that she's distressed, so she asks her if she's alright. Vera confesses that she's Vicente and she was kidnapped when he went missing. She narrates that she was given a sex change and she had to kill people to escape. Vera reminds Christina of the time Vicente offered her a dress six years ago, but she told him that he could wear it himself if he liked it so much. She then takes off her jacket and shows Christina that she's still wearing that dress now. Vera's mother sees them both crying and asks them what's wrong, so Vera tells her that she's Vicente. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.